Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today I thought I'd run you through a basic troubleshooting exercise. Uh, in this example we've got a ATA connected to good old phone which is in turn connected to my Cisco switch. Now I'd like to monitor my ATA as it boots up because I'm having some issues. So if you want to do that, obviously it's a switch, you're not going to see any of the data until you set up your mirroring or span port. So that's what we're going to run through right now. So a couple of things we need to get straight. Obviously the IP address of the switch is always good to have, unless you use a console port obviously. We've got our ports need to be clearly marked and we need to understand which is the source and which is the destination. The source is what you want to monitor. In this case it's the ATA. The destination is what we will monitor with. In my case it's going to be simple old Wireshark. This doesn't have to be Wireshark. It could be uh, Sniffer any protocol analyzer would do and I just happen to be using Wireshark for convenience sake. That's it. So now we've got our map all laid out. We know what we're doing. We're going to move on and telnet into our switch. So we're going to telnet 10.44, 10.41 and there we go. Uh, my banner, because, because it's a lab, will have a banner that tells me my uh, passwords because again it's a lab switch I, I may not touch it for months on end so obviously I don't expect you to do this with a production switch it's not a very good security practice but in my case it's uh, perfectly acceptable so let's log in and enable and everybody knows my passwords Ooh. if I did a show monitor right now I can see if there's any conf uh, ports currently configured for span or mirroring. And in this case, none. So that's good to know. So that's the first thing you should always check. Make sure nobody else has a mirror port. Sometimes you also have a mirror port for IDS, NIDs, HIDs, that kind of stuff. I'm going to configure T. And uh, just like a baking show, I've uh, pre-baked my commands. I'm going to copy them. And I'm going to paste them. There we go. So the syntax is quite simple. Monitor session, give it a number. In my case, I just chose one. It's any random number you like. Source indicates the source port. And again, that was port 4. So fast Ethernet 4. The destination port is going to be me, port number 1. Now, if I do this correctly, believe it or not, I will lose my connection to the switch because the destination port now is uh, used for monitoring only. There are uh, notes out there explaining things about egress commands and, and syntax to help around it. I, I have always had trouble with it, so I'm going to skip that part. I'm just going to show you how to do the basics. In my example, I've got a wired connection and a wireless connection on my laptop. So as soon as the wired connection gets dropped, I'll still be able to get back in with my wireless connection. So here we go. Enter. And oops, I made a typo. There we go. So now as you can see, I'm uh, hitting enter and it's frozen. It's cut off. So I've got two options. I can wait for this to time out or I can just simply open another command prompt, which is what I'm going to do. So here's another command prompt. And telnet 10.44, 10.41. And again, show monitor. Now you can see. So you can see 04 is the source, destination 01, and that's the way it's set up. So if we go back to our diagram, again, you can see 01 and 04. So that's the source, and that's the destination. Simple. Let's move on to Wireshark. So if I go to my Wireshark trace file, you'll see I'm currently capturing. I have a MAC filter of the VoIP. ATA just to eliminate all the extraneous noise floating around. So all I have to do now, I'm going to disconnect my ATA adapter and I'm going to plug in my ATA adapter, basically rebooting it. So we should see a couple of packets fly up on the screen such as gratuitous ARPs and the good old DHCP discovery process. For people who aren't familiar with DHCP, the process is a four-step process and I always, uh, oh that's that's the ATA calling my phone doing a test ring so obviously it worked. Um, 
here we go. So there's our trace file. And as I said, there's a gratuitous ARP and there's DHCP. So I was saying DHCP process is really simple. Uh, named after my mother, believe it or not. D-O-R-A, DORA. Discover, offer, request, and acknowledge. So you can see it. DHCP and then so on and so on and so on. So that's how you do it. Hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.